Hi everyone, nice to see you. It's V. I am the social media human here at Sniff and Lick It, and today I'm very excited because we are having an Instagram live that is going to be all about aromatherapy. It's going to be a chat between one of our co-founders, Judy, who has over 25 years experience in the beauty industry and has brought that over to our lovely hounds. And we are also introducing Anna Webb as well, which is super exciting. Uh, she is one of the UK's leading behavior and nutrition specialists for dogs. Uh, you will hear her on the radio sometimes and even on TV. So we're very excited to have you all here. And yeah, I'm going to pass you over to Judy now, who will say a little bit more about herself and about Anna before we get started. So thank you so much. Bye. The wonders of technology. Thank you, V. <laughs> <laughs> I shall take my place. Hi, everybody, and very, very warm welcome to you all. Um, as V said, I'm, I'm Judy, and I've um, co-founded the the business with Lee. Um, Sniff and Lick It is a, just a wonderful company. Um, I spent over 25 years in the beauty industry, uh, working in skincare, and probably my favourite passion, fragrance. Um, I brought all of these skills to um, the party um, of Sniff and Lick It, and obviously Sniff and Lick It is all about the sniff, um, the fragrance, the sniffology as we like to call it. And um, what we've developed um, is, a, is a range of therapeutic, 100% natural essential oils in our grooming range. And I'm delighted today um, to welcome Anna Webb, who is um, an expert in, in behaviour, therapy, and a writer. She's actually written a book um, all about um, aromatherapy and a therapy for canine um, improving arthritis. Um, in a natural way. She is very much into an integrated, holistic approach. Um, and I'm delighted to welcome you on board today, Anna. And hopefully, have you got Mr. Binks or is it? Um... This is Prudence. I hope. Hi, Judy. You know, thank you so much <laughs> for inviting me on. It's a total pleasure. Um, Likewise. Yeah, because as you were saying, you know, I'm really interested in the um, holistic side, you know, into energetic healing. And that's where aromatherapeutic um, oils really help as well by combining with your dog's inner energy to promote natural healing in the same way that homeopathy works in a different way and indeed you know aspects of traditional Chinese medicine herbs and of course acupuncture um, which similarly triggers um, energetic release um, in in just a, a different way really you know they call it chi and in homeopathy they call it the vital force but um, it's all about looking at nature really to um, help where sometimes conventional medicine can suppress disease and you're often in conventional medicine treating the symptoms rather than the cause um, so and I find with natural uh, remedies you you can work so much so much to the bigger picture, I suppose, is the way to say it, you know, emotionally, um, mentally, um, as well as physically. So there's so much more you can do to enhance health. Yeah. Prudence is fidgeting. Can you see oh, her? Because yeah, Prudence her. is oh, such a fan. So, oh, brilliant. Well, hello, <laughs> Prudence. Nice to see you again. So Look, tell me, Anna, how did you get involved? Um, you know, because obviously you, you, you're a big dog fan and lover. You've got had dogs all your life. How did you tell us a little bit about how you got involved um, with sort of the whole therapy side of uh, the dogs? Well, it all really started with my first miniature bull terrier, Molly, who um, was diagnosed um, with an undiagnosable problem. OK, and um, I basically asked to be referred to the famous holistic vet called Richard Allport. Um, so off we went and we were prescribed various homeopathic remedies at this point this was in 2009 I um I didn't even know what homeopathy was I've got to be honest so this was a, a total baptism of fire and I just became so interested in this alternative paradigm that it led me to study at the College of Integrated Veterinary Therapies um, to learn more and 
I really did that to help Molly, but subsequently, of course, you know, I've helped other dogs and their owners, well, not their owners, their dogs, but helped the owners in helping, you know, heal their dogs and make them better, whether it's through diet or by including certain supplements and remedies and indeed involving aromatherapy very much from a massage perspective, as the, the way to use aromatherapy with dogs is to use a tiny bit of essential oil from plants, which is, as you know, you know, because this is in the range of sniff and lick it grooming products, which is why I particularly love this brand for lots of reasons, you know, uh, <laughs> Judy, because... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really feel Sniff and Lick It through its really witty packaging, you know, witty, um, you know, branding and recyclable packaging is totally appealing to where I feel the market is happening at the moment, particularly with the millennial demographic um, who are apparently driving the, the the market towards natural wellness products. So, yeah. Um, yeah, because it's accessible the way you've um, presented the the products and um, and the aromatherapeutic aspect in your fragrance, yeah. woodland wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, we we combined quite uh, well five different essential oils, uh, as you say. We call it, it's a lovely aromatic, woody, quite sensual scent, but obviously. It's got, the main features are uh, we've got cedarwood oil in there, which is, of course, really grounding. We've got vetiver, which is known as the oil of tranquility, which is that lovely green grassy note often used in a lot of fine fragrances. Petty grey, which I know, I think you've used that on uh, one of your dogs, haven't you, in, in well, the regular therapy? I have, yes, with Mr. Binks, who's um, yeah. resting at the moment, Aww. as Prudence wanted to join yeah. in this, actually. Um, Yes, because Mr. Binks was a rescue dog, a um, rehome, and he was so nervous when I got him, Judy. I mean, unbelievable, um, very shaky. So as I was walking along one day, somebody asked me what, what his name was and uh, said, well, no, you should change that. You should call him Elvis because he shakes so much. Um, <laughs> I know, I was mortified. But um, yes, so um, absolutely Pettigrain. It's uh, renowned for its kind of uplifting, joyful uh, energy content that, you know, can transport a dog, you know, just by... Um, creating a reaction in the brain so uh, and combining with the energy of that particular dog yeah. and it yeah. certainly worked in Mr Binks's case. Brilliant it's really interesting how um, essential oils um, that they're often I, I call it a juxtaposition because um, petty grain is both calm if you look at the benefits it's both calming and relaxing but it's also says it's a tonic boost and it's the same with things like um cedarwood oil um all of them have this kind of both both calming and relaxing and grounding but also can stimulate which i think is a really kind of interesting sort of proposition but really beneficial not just for the dog but for humans too the benefit i mean a lot of people have cedarwood candles or cedarwood's a really good deodorizer um, but it's probably the one of the one of the top oils for anxiety. And of course, at the moment, we've got a, lot, a big, you know, uh, people are going back to work. And, you know, it's possible that a lot of dogs are going to suffer that separation anxiety. Um, would you recommend um, any particular oils and, and any therapies for um, anxiety and separation? Well, I always think massage is such a good place to start, really, um, to help with bonding between owners and their dogs. I think um, Prue's got these uh, treats here, actually, so we'll just <laughs> do a bit of positive reinforcement. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so spending time with your dog, and I think the thing, the problem is with with lockdown, um, dogs have been brought in, perhaps not for all the right reasons. You know, dogs bring us companionship, and there 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 are de stressors. They get us outdoors, um, but you know, you do have to remember a dog is a dog, and dogs need to spend time with their owners. They've been pre programmed to. So I think spending quality time with your dog is so important, and massage is so easy you know it's free you can do it when you're sitting on the sofa when you're in a calm frame of mind watching Netflix or whatever it might be and just calmly you know run down each side of your dog's spine just with your thumb little circular movements you know how massage boosts 
yourself. I mean, I love a good massage and you, yeah, you come out sort of floating, you know, yeah. feeling totally yeah. reborn. And so, and dogs store tension in their muscles just as we do, and they develop tight shoulders like we do. So that's where as well you can just boost that experience by adding a little bit of aromatherapy to either calm or like with prudence. Aromatherapy has worked well with her, particularly actually with cedarwood, as you were talking about, because that is such an earth oil you know it is grounding it's about roots it's about being calm and it's a very soothing remedy it's also excellent for repelling pesky bugs like fleas which yeah. is an added bonus you know Absolutely. to repel fleas naturally you know which is something I'm all about as well so it, it is a great kind of all-round remedy I and mean, lots of dogs are anxious Prue was born completely hyperactive and um, you know I used to say about prudence you could plug her in and she would be the solution to uh, climate change <laughs> because <laughs> it would be a natural um, source of energy. Yeah. She'd um, certainly, I think, power whales. But anyway, um, um, yeah, so, yeah, so it's a simple way to enhance your relationship with your dog. And, um, and then once dogs are trained and they understand boundaries and you've trained your dog that you will be coming home, that's the point. Dogs at first don't really understand you leaving them alone, but you have to really practice this from the get go. From the first day you get your puppy, your puppy spends the majority of its time in a separate room to where you are, mainly, I would say, the kitchen, um, so that you're training the fact that the dog is happy being independent. It builds confidence in the dog as well, you know, because you don't want a clingy dog. You want a dog that can go into any environment and feel comfortable that you're by the dog's side. The dog's following your lead. And the fact that you're there with the dog, the dog knows that it's, there's no danger. There's nothing to be anxious about. So, um, but it all begins um, with constant desensitization from the get go of bringing either a rescue into your life, a young adult dog. It's all the same. But with puppies, you know, I always feel they're like balls of clay. The world literally is your oyster with a puppy. Um, and uh, yeah, so, but I think there is going to be a lot of anxiety. There is a lot of anxiety in mm -hmm. dogs at the moment. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Um, I mean, the the other thing um, about aromatherapy and massage, I loved it when you told me the other day how when you're massaging um, your dog that you actually end up and, and just literally pricking their ears up. Yes, yeah. Well, that's, that's, you see, this is such a simple technique. I was actually in the, the show ring with the full set Prudence, okay, at Crufts. And um, it was a huge class and Prue was getting a little bit bored and um, a bit fidgety, you know, and you ha they have to try, you have to try and keep your dog standing as still as possible. So um, I thought crumbs, you know, um, we've got to sort this out. So I just thought, I know, I'm just going to calmly massage her head and then and just pinch the tips of her ears like this like this yes we pinch the tips of your ears because <laughs> the tips of dog's ears are hugely yeah. sensitive and so this is sending messages to Prue's brain to calm down and you know what it did it knocked her down a gear in the show okay. ring and we got second out of 13 oh, which brilliant. you know it's just brilliant. a fun thing to do for socialization yeah. and, and training you know I'm not um totally about showing her as you know she's also well the thing is as well about dogs judy as you know it's their olfaction you know Absolutely. But, um which is why the right oils really have to be combined into formulas for dogs because their sense of smell is literally un uncomprehendable to us you know they've got 220 million scent receptors in their nose we only have five million but it's a lot more complicated than that they've got a whole chamber in their brain dedicated to storing and memorizing every scent they encounter so a lot of memory a lot of um you know past present and future will rely on smell for a dog so it is very very important
um, to bear that in mind as well yeah. when you're training your dog and living with your dog, you know. Yeah. So that's why I've trained Prudence to uh, um, find truffles. We haven't actually found a total <laughs> one yet in the wild, oh. but um, she is a um, qualified truffle hunter. Truffle hunter. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, though, the essentials when we were developing, uh, you know, the, the fragrance uh, blend. We, we did actually work with a pet aromatherapist and we looked at, you know, what did a lot of research about what oils were good for dogs. And, and we did find actually some that that there were some no no's there. Um, I mean, for example, um, juniper berry oil is great um, because it's actually anti antiseptic, but it's also got a lovely fruity note, fresh fruity note. But juniper wood oil is not good. Pine oil isn't good. Um, some like they they say tea tree oil isn't particularly good because there's a lot of uh, sort of allergens and terpenes in the, some of these ingredients. So, you know, it's it's quite important, and I think you know for us, obviously the oils are very diluted in the formula mm. um to a safe level that is good to be applied topically you know on the job on the dog so for example when um you know a good product for massaging like you suggested for doing aromatherapy on your dog the dry shampoo is a lovely powder which you can just sprinkle over and massage in and i know you're already a big fan of that i love i love this product the no rinse charming yeah, yeah. Um, because dry shampoos are a great idea, but to be honest, up until um, discovering No Rinse Charming, there hasn't been one on the market that isn't like a spray and, and packed with volatile organic compounds that, you know, are not only toxic to your dog, but to you as well. You know, some really, you know, chemically <laughs> driven yeah. um, products, you know, definitely not 100% organic products. Um, yeah. So um, this is why I love um, the No Rinse but I also love it because it features a product that I learned about in my study um, called Diamatisius Earth. And when I've mentioned this over the years to people, people are going, oh, sorry, what is that? What, what is it? So, um, Judy, explain what Diamatisius Earth so is. Diamatis I came across it actually in the beauty industry because it's actually used in, is it used as a, a, a sort of a very mild abrasion in toothpaste um, and in a lot of skincare products it's used as a facial scrub because it's very very fine powder that's organic it's actually got a lot of minerals in it um, but it's used as you say in our dry shampoo it's actually called there's, there's several names for diatomaceous earth there's fuller's earth um, and also multana mitty clay which is what we've described it as on ours but as you say it's brilliant for um, uh, uh, cleansing the fur deodorizing but probably most importantly it's a renowned flea and tick repellent um, yeah. so yeah you're getting all of those benefits in, in one little sprinkle no, it's fantastic. And it's got the, the Woodland Wonder for fragrance yeah. in. So you've, so you've got a bit of aromatherapeutic oils in there yeah. as well. No, I, um, I think it's um, a fantastic product and one, that, honestly, that the market really, really, really needs. And one of my vets, Barbara Jones, actually up in Shropshire, she's also um, an organic uh, dairy farmer. And so um, I spent a year in Shropshire helping my mum, <laughs> side story. And... Um, and Barbara's saying, oh, Diamatisius Earth, Anna, yeah, I mean, it's brilliant. How do you think organic farmers keep their crops and their land, insect, you know, insect and bug free? Um, because, you know, they can't use insecticides and it is with Diamatisius Earth. So this all became such a revelation to me after studying about it that, yes, here, you know, somebody was really explaining to me how they really do use it every day. Yeah. So um, it's... Uh, a little well, I, I, I love it. I actually use this because it's 100% natural. I actually use it myself. I do a lot of swimming and it's just lovely to sort of keep in my swimming bag. But obviously, I, I, I like to use it on my sister's dog. She loves it. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. But there's also a product I also love is the Fab Paw. Um, that's like, oh, a supersonic paw bomb. <laughs> it's the only way I could describe it. Um, Ta da! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got it here, actually. Um, as well. Yes, look, there we go. Prue, what is this? We put this on Prue's nose oh. as well as on her paws because bull terriers have this thing where they often have pink skin on her nose. I hope you can see this. So 
She's good about it, rubbing it in there. And she's been bitten by an insect, actually, at the moment, oh, on her side. It's okay, but she's been really scratching it. So I've been putting a fab pore on it because she has made the surrounding skin a bit raw from her so scratching. it'll help soothe and calm soothe. it down. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, it's slightly anti-inflammatory anti with the ingredients as well. So yeah. um, I'm finding it's working, but I use it on my own hands. Um, <laughs> As a cuticle remove. Yeah, Soft that, yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it, it's it's a hundred. Well, ninety nine point nine eight percent natural, as I call it. Um, but all the oils and butters are so nourishing and um, soothing, protecting, and they're full of omega essential oils. Um, and it's just got that lovely nutty aroma, but with a very hint of the natural aromatherapy, mm. uh, therapeutic oils. So you'll get it, getting the benefits of you know everything really. Um, and but yeah, just just coming back to um, you, you know your experience with with natural therapies. Um, it, do you have any advice for um, people with dogs about you know um, helping them you know to calm them down? Um, other than you know, are there any other techniques you would offer? Gosh, I mean, so many. I mean, one obviously consistent theme with me is nutrition. And of course, feeding a dog on a species appropriate diet, i.e. fresh whole food that comprises mainly meat, um, rather than heavily processed types of food yeah. that contain a lot of ingredients that aren't really meant for a dog to eat. So everything from barley to rice to wheat and maize and so on, because those ingredients are basically sugar. So yeah. there's so many studies that show that dogs like us can get sugar spikes. So a dog eating a very sugary, spiky kind of diet will have massive mood swings. And um, of course that can create hyperactivity, then kind of the opposite, real slump behavior, mood swings, swings um and that's not generally you know conducive to being calm so a good wholesome whole food diet is my number one thing to always say because you are what you eat at the end of the day yeah. um so um and good to mix it up a bit don't don't always have preserved foods mix up natural and yeah, no, totally. Yeah. I mean, I'm into balanced, complete raw food feeding, and there's yeah. so many fabulous brands now on the market giving a huge amount of choice, um, which wasn't the case. Crumbs only 20 years ago, none existed. So it's actually um, a really interesting growth sector as well of the market. But in terms of calming, um, you know, again, looking at plants to help. Um, there are um, diffusers out there um, that emit um, herbal remedies that do calm. There's also, I mean, Prue's actually wearing a little t-shirt at the moment, which is a calming vest. Oh, Not that it doesn't seem to be working at the moment but um, <laughs> generally it might do but it's also covering her bite so she can't scratch it yeah. um so yes yeah, so but again a, a lot of dogs are anxious because they're not taken out of themselves enough they're not given enough mental stimulation so they're left to kind of procrastinate most of the day you know living in their own heads and we all know what happens if we we do that. You know, we need to punctuate our day. We need regular exercise. Going outdoors is fantastic. Dogs love regular walks, you know, um, taking in the fresh air, all of these things, understanding what makes your dog tick, like we were saying about their olfaction. So tap in. You know, if you've got a cockapoo or a labradoodle, remember they are a highly tuned gun dog. So be aware of the type of dog you've got you know I always say make sure you choose a dog that's suitable for your lifestyle be honest with yourself if you like hiking in Cumbria fantastic yeah. take on a border collie or a Labrador but if you don't you know and you, you're a townie consider a different breed perhaps you know yeah, um, much as I, I would love a St Bernard I'm not sure my two bedroom flat in London would really <laughs> fit in with that kind of lifestyle well, this one is day it. <laughs> yeah, one day, I know, exactly. No, absolutely. But, um, you know, what interests me as well, Judy, is your background in the human market, because, you know, you were talking about um, using Fuller's Earth in facial scrubs. And, of course, I didn't even realise this until recently, that um, 
the regulations in grooming products are, are nothing near what they are for human products. No. So yeah, many right. ingredients, you know, all these products say they're 100% natural, which again is what I loved about Sniff and Lick It, because you admit that you're not 100% natural, but I think that's so honest and transparent, because in a way, do you think any product can be 100% natural, Judy? Well, well, they can be. Yeah, they can. I mean, for example, the, the dry shampoo, um, yeah. it is. Um, but sometimes it's hard to get 100% natural and get a stable product or give you the three-year shelf life that you need, need on a product. Um, and the other thing is, um, some, believe it or not, some, one of the reasons we didn't use lavender in, in uh, obviously it's quite a common fragrance, um, as, as one of the essential oils, is actually lavender actually has a lot of allergens in. Um, nowadays, um, fragrances, um, you have to declare allergens on the back of pack. I think there's something like 33% of the population claim to be, either have sensitive skin or have, sensi um, you know, be sensitized by something, you know, whether it's nut allergies, um or you know something that's triggered often through a fragrance and in particular we have to be very careful with essential oils so um for example on your packaging you do have to we every every product goes through a safety assessment um to make sure you know there's nothing toxic in there that it's all at the appropriate level suitable for the dog so you know for example all of our products are ph balanced but in particular, the fragrance. So on the back of the pack, you will notice um, an allergen declaration. Just so a consumer, for example, obviously if you're using the product and you've got very sensitive skin, you can be aware of it and know your allergies. Um, but um, yeah, so we have to declare that. But generally speaking, you don't have to put every ingredient on the on the on the pack in, in pet care. We do because we, as you say, we like to be open and honest about everything that we do. I would like to explain everything. Yes, we do use preservatives. No, we don't use parabens. We don't use phylates, for example. We don't use sodium lauryl sulfate, which is that um, the cleansing agent or sort of detergent, which is in a lot of pet uh, shampoos, which gives actually the dog and, and humans uh, very scaly, can cause eczema, mm. dry skin conditions. So we've tried to put as much really good naturals in there, conditioning uh, products, lovely, you know, that shea butter, etc. So, yeah, I think, you know, we, as I said, you're right. We, we're not 100% natural, but we do, you know, the fragrances, and that's the key for us, that um, the essential oils that we've used, they're therapeutic grade, which means they're very, very good quality. Um, all the goodness, if you like, has been encapsulated. They're actually apparently picked, um, these plants and flowers that go into the oils and distilled are picked at key times of the day that optimizes all the ingredients to give the kind of best. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we carefully chose the blend and I think it's, it, I mean, it's a lovely woody aromatic, um, with a, a sort of fruity note. Um, I love it. Look, yeah. Julie, I'm going to spray some here now in front <laughs> of me just so that I can have a little whiff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a bit like, um, it's, some people say it's a little bit masculine, um, but it's, it's quite, um, like a home fragrance, like a, a candle fragrance. But the key thing is the dog loves it. I um, we had a lot of dogs kind of sniffing it out where we were, um, you know, friends and families were all try tried it on their dogs and they loved it. You know, Brilliant. lots of wagging tails, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I, you know, I know Prudence and Mr. Binks absolutely love it. And um, it is, I'll say, it's, it's just so easy to use as well. And it's friendly and, you know, the packaging looks good, which I think in this day and age is kind of as supercilious as that might seem. I think that matters now in the age we're living yeah. in. Um, well, but, uh, the idea of the, the silver was um, obviously aluminium's recyclable, but we actually thought, listen, why, why don't we actually develop a, a design a product that actually looks good on the bathroom shelf? You know, we don't really want this to sit underneath the kitchen sink, which a lot of pet care <laughs> products do, or out in the garage yeah. or the utility room. You know, 
what I'd love one day is that actually Sniff and Lick It has its own little bathroom cabinet. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, no, that, that would be brilliant. Well, you've got your, um, I was, you know, honoured to be gifted one of your um, travel bags. <laughs> the what's that? Yeah, exactly. So for, you know, um, those weekends away and everything, you've got everything in a really gorgeous um, bag with little flying whippets. And again, <laughs> that's a silver kind of theme, which I, I, I like. And also just the, the, the witty wording and um, descriptions as well. I think it um, just makes, makes the brand very accessible, Prudence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you've always... so have you got any questions come up? Lee? I think I think we've answered. I think you've answered this one. Uh, we had this from a um, someone wrote in said, "Can aromatherapy help little dogs fear and aggression?" Well, yes. As we were saying, I mean, Mr. Binks is tiny, and yeah. again, you know, it work. <laughs> you know, combined with massage, um, just to build confidence. Um, and little dogs sometimes have Napoleon complexes. Um, so it's, uh, and they sometimes suffer from fear aggression because they can be picked on easily in the park due to their small size. Um, so um, that would be what I would recommend along with, you know, consistent training. Yeah. I think some people think that small dogs don't need to be trained because they can be carried everywhere. And it's one of my little bugbears actually seeing small dogs being carried everywhere because that is actually training them to be up higher than other dogs. So they, they get a sense of their own self-importance. That's and really it can interesting. Act yeah, yeah, I never and thought it can about that. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yes. So that's why lots of little dogs being carried will be quite yappy. Um, and it's best to get them walking on the ground. Yeah. Yes. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> well, Anna, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you. Um, I want to say on our show, but it is, it is, it is on your show. Well, no, it's been brilliant. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And um, good luck with Mr. Binks and Prudence. And um, keep sniffing and licking. We will keep sniffing and licking. We love it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. Oh, hang on. Just one, one oh. last thing, Anna. No, one it's fine. Thing. We need to say, can you share your discount code? Oh, Anna. yes. Yes, so it's Anna. 15. Brilliant. Um, and the Anna is in capital letters. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. And of course, you can also tune in to episode 65 of my podcast, A Dog's Life with Anna Webb. Because um, we, we did record a great podcast, Judy. Um, and if you want to get delve deeper into all the ingredients from Sniff and Lick It, tune in. It's streaming on all platforms. And oh, um, it's a really good listen, I must admit. So because um, we, we haven't talked about the quillage bark. Oh, gosh, quillage bark. We've we missed quillage bark. It's an ingredient I never heard of ever before. But that's all in the podcast. But we can oh, yeah. just... Well, I'll just quickly mention Go it on. because I mm. did quillage bark. I wanted to bring some bark-friendly ingredients into the range. And quillage bark, I'd actually used or come across it when I was um, in the beauty industry. And I used to work on skincare. And I was looking for some interesting new, new ingredients to put into a micellar cleanser gel. And we'd used um, kakadu plum, which is full of vitamin C from Australia, and um, I, I came across a company called Karuba in um, Chile. I think it's in South, the Amazon anyway. And they had an ingredient called Quillage Bark Soap, which is from a tree. And it's, it's amazing properties. Um, a lot of these ingredients are found from centuries of, you know, a local people using them naturally. Yes. Mm. And um, it's a very sustainable ingredient. And it, the, the reason I used it was because it's natural, it's mild and gentle. So again, it, it, it cleanses, it's, it's basically a very gentle soap. So it lifts out the dirt. And oh, Ooh. look, licking. <laughs> She's so monkey. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and then we put white willow bark in as well, which again is a quite a well-known skincare ingredient, which is renowned for its antibacterial properties. So that all, both those uh, bark ingredients go throughout the whole of the grooming range. 
Yeah. And I love that because, you know, again, it's fusing your experience from the human market and um, learning that, you know, many ingredients are are hidden in um, doggy grooming products. I, I, I absolutely love sniff and lick it um and and the other thing is you know i'd just say as well you know if you have a dog like prudence who's now on the floor um (laughs) she loves to roll in fox poo you know and many dogs do now um the shampoo the the, yeah it's amazing because it's three in one isn't it yeah Um, judy it's it's probably four in one actually because it it cleanses it um it brightens the fur it obviously conditions and it deodorizes. We've actually got a really nice natural plant deodorizer in, which is actually comes from sugar cane, an enzyme, and it's been turned into an enzyme. So that actually works to reduce, they've proven it through right. testing to actually reduce the odor or, or neutralize the odors. But so it's that great. just seed wood is, you know, works in combination. And we yeah. have it with patrol. Yeah, the whiff patrol. But it's just great because one round of shampoo does everything. So if you've got a fidgety dog in the bath, you know, you you, you minimise the time and you can maximise the positive experience. Because yeah. yeah. that's another aspect, of course, bonding with your dog. It's working through all the things from clipping their toenails, to cleaning their ears, cleaning their eyes. And of course, bathing. You can't yeah. always run to your groomer in you know in a panic that your dog's just jumped into a stagnant pond um so you do have to be able to bathe your own dog so um yes i say train um an effective bath time which i must admit prudence has got down to a t i'm quite proud of her with her bath time routine judy (laughs) how often do you um bathe your dogs I well we oh well, prudence quite often <laughs> because she will love to find anything. It can even be I know it sounds gross, stale urine on some grass. She'll before she does, she's so funny. We're just walking along, walking along, then all of a sudden she'll just throw herself into <laughs> a pile of stinky stuff and just roll, you know. So um you know, probably with crew about once a week, but often wow, more. I mean, yeah. once I was rushing back from the walk, because she'd rolled tremendously. I mean, it was terrible. And I had um, an interview with BBC Radio Scotland, okay, and it was all timed perfectly until Prudence covered herself in the stinky stuff. So then there was this mad panic because I had to get a clean before I, I went on air. So there was this, I'll never forget, and I just thought, gosh, if they could see me now bathing my dog really, really quickly before rushing and getting into gear to go on, on air. It was just quite a funny moment, really. Uh, I mean, that, that's really where, you know, give a dog cologne because it's cleansing, refreshing, deodorizing. Mm. Um, everything all in one, one little bottle would be perfect. Those disaster I... moments just before you, you thought <laughs> you've got a clean dog and they go and roll in something. Well, yeah, and it's, you know, but that's exactly the same when, you you know, lots of people, hopefully, Judy, will be taking their dogs to the office. And I'm hoping that employers are going to be opening their doors, a bit like all these super modern tech companies like Facebook and Google that are very dog friendly. So, um, you know, anything can happen en route (laughs) from your home to the office. Um, So you do need these these things if you're going yeah. to have a perfect dog your dog nobody wants a dog in the office smelling of the no. stinky stuff no no but it's, it's funny actually what a great effect having a dog in an office can have i know one of my friends used to bring her dog, dog in occasionally and the car i mean it's it's a real stress reliever you know just stroking the dog in a meeting can just <laughs> you know give you i don't know what it is it just gives you a sort of calms you down if you're doing a presentation or something yeah i mean i think it's a great idea i the other thing i know you're campaigning for which is i, I know i happen to know a lot of people that have um have been unable to sort of rent a property or buy a property because of the law against uh you know certain people who don't want or landlords don't want dogs or pets in their in their homes and i know there's a, you're campaigning aren't you with government to try and get that changed um, yes, yes. Well, with um, Andrew Rossendale and his campaign, you know, Jasmine's Law and working with other organisations like Poor House um, to help um, 
make it mandatory for um, renters to be able to bring a well-behaved dog or cat into rented accommodation. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, I think dogs that make less mess often than, you know, toddlers that particularly, you know, get on the walls with their felt tips and everything. <laughs> um, so I think it's... Um, it, it, Have we lost? Oh, we're gone. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, have we lost you, Anna? I think we might have. Um, have we run out of steam? No. <laughs> Anna, well, I, I've got my technical expert here. I don't know what's happened. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway. We've had a really fantastic chat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sign language, I wish I did. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for everyone for tuning in. Yeah. We've loved having you. We're so sorry that we can't hear Anna anymore to say goodbye. Um, but make sure that you use the code ANNA15, that's A -N -N -A -N -A 15 and that will give you a discount on our web shop. You can find that on the link in our bio, and you can go straight there. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Anna. Bye. Thanks.